as we all know, Ray Allen just got the announcement, you know, that he's going to be inducted to the Hall of Fame. And the question of the day is, any are any Celtics going to reach out to him from the 2008 uh, championship team? Wish him congratulations, A. And B, are any of them going to show up to his uh, Hall of Fame ceremony and stuff like that? And it's kind of sad the whole way that the Boston Celtics blew up. The way that they came together was crazy. The trades, free agency, you know, that was amazing. You know, K, you got KG, Paul Pierce, and Kevin Garnett. I mean, KG, Paul Pierce, and um, Ray Allen all together in their prime. Not in their prime, but the tail end of their prime. So it wasn't like how Miami got together. This seemed like a little more organic. Plus, like, these are all three guys that never won a ring. So them coming together in that fashion, they are the precursor to the big threes, to the teaming up and stuff like that. That's the precursor. GM showed the players how to do it. So the way they came together was amazing. You know, when you heard it, it was just like, whoa. And then when they came together to play that great basketball in 2008 and they won a championship, that was amazing. That was amazing. Their team was so deep that Eddie House, Rondo, Posey. I mean, just the, the three of them together was overpowering then you add some of the role players that they had like James Posey could have been a franchise player for somewhere else you know Eddie Curry I mean Eddie House was a great shooter from Miami played in New Jersey great veteran guy then you look at upcoming Rondo you had the Kendrick Perkins who was young at the time um Poe I mean it, their, their team was a solid solid team like it was really solid and then to see them fall out the way they did it was just crazy you know Ray Allen tried to, he came on ESPN to explain why he left and et cetera, et cetera. He said that they didn't want to give him the deal that he wanted. Then by the time he felt like, he felt like he wasn't a priority, so he went into Miami. There was a big hole in Ray Allen's story that I wish he never spoke about the whole situation. I wish he just spoke about his book at the time because he's promoting his book that he wrote. The thing is, the Boston Celtics offered Ray Allen, like, I think it was two years, 12 million. The Miami Heat offered him like the minimum, like two years, four million or something. So it wasn't about the money or the contracts. So like Ray, I feel like he has to admit at the end of the day, he just didn't want to be there. The Boston Celtics offered you more money than the Miami Heat. Point blank period. And all the other players, he said he was looking at Timberwolves and all the other stuff, but none of them came with like a a big hefty offer that I, I, in his story that I heard that he turned down. So you could see a why his teammates were upset with him because they the, the franchise offered you more money than the Miami Heat. Then B is just like, dude, we just been to battle with them like the past two or three seasons, and those players like we we've all faced against Chris Bosh, Dwayne Wade, and LeBron James, and they felt like they could have made another championship run. You got to remember. They won the finals in 08. Then they, um, they went to the finals and it was with 2010 and lost to the Lakers or whatever the case is. But they felt like they could have competed for another championship. But I guess when the Heat era came, Ray Allen was looking, reading between the lines like, hey, this is done. Like, I can't get along with Rondo and stuff like that. But the guys were upset about him joining the Heat, which are their rivals. And then just like the way that he went about it. Instead of just saying, I just want to I just wanna depart from you guys, he made it seem like it was all management, how they treated him, when they gave him more money than the Heat. Like, so you can't really say like it was management or you hated their approach. I mean, you could say, okay, let's say you, you do hate their approach. They still offered you more money. So I don't know, maybe because of state tax or you want to be closer to Orlando because your mom and stuff like that. So... That's all fine and dandy. But with the Celtics, with the other four guys, you know, Rondo, KG, Paul Pierce, you know, Paul Pierce has let it go. They met uh, Ray Allen in China. He met Ray Allen in China. They talked about it, chopped it up. They kind of, Paul Pierce never really had a beef with him. Like, all of the guys basically had a beef with, with the way that he did it. And he just basically, he's unapologetic for not giving his guys, like, I guess the heads up or whatever the case is. But business is business. That's, that's what everybody says. Business is business. But that wasn't business. Because business would have told you to stay in Boston for more money. So that's why the guys are kind of scratching their head and upset. Because they're like, 
well, this wasn't really a business decision because we, our team offered you more money. So, you know, Ray Allen has a right to make his choice. I, I'm not doubting that or whatever. But the kind of the thing that was awkward for Ray is when Paul Pierce had his jersey hung up, they just said that you um, chopped it up with him in China. Everything was cool. Ray Allen doesn't show up to his uh, retirement ceremony. I mean, his uh, jersey retirement cer ceremony. Which doesn't make any sense. Like, you guys chopped it up. Everything was cool. So, why wouldn't you be there? So, there is some kind of internal friction. There is something more than just he had beef with Ray John Rondo and arguments. There is, like, something deep, deep rooted in the way that he left. Uh, deep rooted in his relationships with each personal player. Like, from Rondo to KG. Because KG wouldn't even look at him. You guys remember that game? He tried to give him that, but KG wouldn't look at him. Then you look at Paul Pierce. Paul Pierce is just chilling in the wind, you know, like, he's like, uh, it's whatever, man, like, we, it's water under the bridge, and then you look at Doc Rivers from the outside, like, did Doc Rivers perpetuate some of that hate? Because Doc Rivers came out and said he hates that the, the guys don't get along or whatever the case is, but maybe this was, the, the genesis was when you were coaching them, so, but there's something deep rooted in there that we won't know till another five to ten years later, because that's not really normal, like, Ray Allen's retired, KG's retired, Paul Pierce doesn't play anymore. And for these guys to still be mad at each other, you even see Kobe and Shaq, like, they kind of threw water them. And Kobe and Shaq had a, a crazy feud, and it was well documented. But this is different. This is a lot different. Like, there's a lot of things that we're not seeing or not hearing as to why these guys can't get along or get it together. I mean, these guys are all going to the Hall of Fame for something that they did together. Being one of the best teams. Their team was, like, one of the best teams. I think I would say they're, like, a top 10, top 15 team ever, honestly speaking. Top 10 team, honestly. If you, if you compare them to other teams, their, their team was dominant. So, for them to act like the way that they act or whatever the case is, Kendrick Perkins still holding the grudge, it's very odd. Like, all of that is, is odd to me. Because all he did was leave. And I, I know you don't like the way that he left, but there's something other in there, like, Somebody slept with somebody's baby mama or somebody did something detrimental that we're just not hearing because all those guys seem like they have big hearts. They seem like they have love for the game, love for each other. So that's just odd. And then when one of the things that Ray Allen mentioned, he said, KG forgets the genesis of our friendship. You know, when we were rookies and all this other stuff. Well, if you guys are so friendly or whatever, like, why don't you be the bigger person and just be like, yo, KG, you know, whatever. You my dog. Like, I'm going to still ride with you. You know, I know you hate my decision. But, you know, if you guys were friends before all this, like before the Celtics, because that's what Ray Allen said in his interview on ESPN uh, earlier this year or last year, why don't you just bury the hatchet, whatever the case is? I don't think, you know, even when the guys came on, I think it was uh, the KG show on TNT after Dark or whatever the case is. Uh, Area 21, yeah. KG was like, you know, hey, Ray, you know, you can always come or whatever the case is. Like, it's all good. Like, it's all love or whatever the case is. I think the guys want him to atone for his sin of not doing business. Like, that wasn't a business move. I guess there's something in between the lines that we will never know. But it's, it's come on, guys. You guys, the only reason we talk about the big threes is because of you guys. So you guys got to find a way to just bury it. If Kobe and Shaq can bury it, you guys can bury it. Point blank, period. If Kobe and Shaq, Kobe and Shaq had the meanest feud. Kobe talking about Shaq paying off hoes. All this other stuff. If Kobe and Shaq can do it, you three can do it. I know Paul Pierce is already open to it. So it's just, to me, it's really Ray and KG and then Ray and Rondo. Like, I don't think those two ever kind of get along. Something happened that is it's too far gone, but... Uh, but all the other guys, Kendrick, all these role players being mad at Ray Allen, like, cut, cut, cut it out. Like, you got a ring because of Ray Allen, so cut it out. And vice versa, Ray Allen, you got a ring because these guys are setting screens and stuff like that. This has to kind of come to a head, man. Like, there should be water under the bridge by now. But this, it's like a betrayal. And it's like Ray Allen pulled the KD before KD. And, you know, people just can't get over it. Some things, though... You got to let go. This is one of them. Tell me what you think. If these guys are ever going to get back together, uh, be friendly again. Hoops Junction. Hoops meets Hoopla. Like, comment, and subscribe.